Like, how old are you, Lex? You're in your mid thirties. Yeah, to late forties. Mid, late twenties to late forties. Yeah, somewhere in there. That that's the demographic. Yes. I do think that partially what's happened is is that your group has never seen functional institutions. These institutions have been so compromised for so long. Uh, you've probably never seen an adult. Sometimes I think Elon looks like an adult. I know that he, he has a wild lifestyle, but I also see him looking like an adult. What does an adult look like exactly? Oh, you know, somebody who weighs things, speaks carefully, thinks about the future beyond their own life, lifespan. Uh, somebody who has a pretty good idea of how to get things done isn't wildly caught up in punitive actions, is more focused on breaking new ground than playing rent-seeking games. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really had a positive, I was so completely chast when Elon Musk ended up as the world's richest person. He was like, well, that's interesting, back to work. <laughs> uh, it's just like, that's what, that's what, it, that's a what grown an adult up, would do. That's, yeah. what an, that's what a grown up would do. And it just made, you know, he, he, weirdly I said something about, isn't it amazing that the world's richest person knows what a Lagrangian is. And he made a terrible Lagrange joke about potentials. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I do think that ultimately Elon may be one of the closest things we have to an adult. And I can tell you that the internet hyenas will immediately descend as to what a fraudster he is for pumping his stock price, talking his book and all this stuff. Shut up. So looking at the world seriously and rigorously, you're saying that the people who are running tech companies are running the mediums on which we can exercise the ideal of free speech are not adults? I think not. I think, first of all, a lot of them are Silicon Valley utopian uh, businessmen, where you talk a utopian line and you use it. You, you've heard my, my take, which is that uh, the idealism of every era is the cover story of its greatest thefts. And I believe that in many ways, the idealism of Silicon Valley about connecting the world, a world of abundance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is really about the uh, software eating the world, as Mark Andreessen likes to say it. There were all these legacy properties, and by simply being a bad tech version of uh, something that previously existed, like a newspaper, you could immediately start to dwarf that by aggregating newspapers and their digital versions, because digital is so much more powerful. As a result, yes, we have lots of uh, man children um, wandering around uh, what once was the Bay Area and is now Austin and Miami and other places, um, maybe Singapore, that um, all of these people, that you know, these are friends of ours and they're brilliant with respect to a certain amount of stuff, but none of them can get off the drip. It's amazing that none of them have FU money. We've got billionaires who don't have FU money. Okay, I think the argument used by Jack Dorsey was that there was an incitement of violence, and not just Jack Dorsey, but everybody uh, that was banning people. And then this word violence was used as a kind of, uh, just like extremism and so on to, uh, without much reason behind it. You think it's impossible for Jack Dorsey or anybody else to be, as you said, an adult, a grown up, and well, Jack is pretty close to being a grown-up. It seems like he is. Yeah. He's, oh, he's, as but he's under pressures. As you've discussed, he, it seems that he's been on the verge of almost being quite serious and transparent and real. I don't people. know where the Jack Dorsey that I met went. And I worry that that must be something behind the scenes that I can't see. Uh, from my perspective, what I think is the stress, the burden of that when people are screaming at you, is, no, Jack, uh, is Jack, overwhelming. Jack is a Zen monk. He really is. <laughs> yeah. Jack is an incredibly impressive person, intellectually, morally, spiritually, at least for a couple of meetings. I don't know him very well, but I'm very impressed by the person I met, and I don't know where that person is, and that terrifies me. But do you think somebody could step up in that way? No. Uh, you, so it, does it, can it, does a human being have the capacity to be transparent about the reasoning behind the banning, or do you think all banning eventually, uh, all banning of people from mediums of communication, is eventually destructive, or it's impossible for human beings to reason with ourselves about it?